Oh, hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good. It only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Nico. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see. Because of the dam. The landlord said he'd fix it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. <laughs> uh. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating. It's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. Aww. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. I can still ask about her. Have you seen anyone out here watching Mademoiselle Collard's apartment? Yes, I have. A strange man. Tall and thin as a broomstick. Goatee. He kept his face hidden. But I saw his eyes peering from evil little slits. How was he dressed? A long brown raincoat with an hat. Or like Humphrey Bogart. Yes, but he didn't have Bogart's charisma. <laughs> Besides, this guy looked like he needed a toilet. You never saw Bogart clenching his buttocks like that. Interesting. Is there anything else you can tell me about Mademoiselle Collard? No, monsieur. Collard. Sorry. Flowers! Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people... Associate them with death. Yikes. Thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. Oh, let's ask about our future. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? What's what? You're going on a long journey. My oh my. What a surprise. A series of games. Can you tell me anything games. I don't already know? <laughs> a series of games, How yes. How does this fortune telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Keep asking. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Oh, dear. Other people, I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, Oh, uh, okay. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Yes. Rather terrifying, eh? See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. I don't see any of those items being particularly useful for conversing. It was the door to Nico's apartment. Then we... Then we go in. Inwards. Upwards. Remembering roundwards. the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently, just above the lock. Crack. Hi. Bonjour. I'm glad you could make it, monsieur. Uh, please, uh, call me George. Fine. I'm Nico. Take a seat, George. There's different audio quality in all of Have these. You? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers underneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck. Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? My editor told me to drop the story. Can you believe it? But you're not going to do that. Oh, no. I'm going to find out what's behind these killings. It just doesn't add up. It 
almost feels like some sort of conspiracy. Almost. The police in three different countries <laughs> have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, the clown. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arno Bellotta, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it, millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was lured to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. How did he die? At the hands, or should I say flippers, of a giant emperor penguin. <coughs> a snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. I had been about to add mime to the list, but stopped myself. I really didn't want to have to explain to George about my father's involvement with Cachon. And it was something you know, we added in the director's cut. This is scary. And I'll tell you this, I will not be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance for a big break. Or an early death. Yeah, so it's like they've added that in as a, it's a completely separate kind of storyline that, that they've kind of tried to connect. Hmm. But it's like, oh yes, it's plot-wise connected, but I'm not going to talk about it. But... Yeah. Nico. Tell me more about yourself. <laughs> There's nothing much to tell. Well, how'd you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought me my first camera. I was eight, and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes. My mother went off with her new boyfriend. I didn't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted me to study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Right, let's offer these items. I don't think the tool's going to be particularly useful, but we'll the other ones. I found this false nose in the sewer. Hey, what's this inside it? The contents of someone's nose? Don't be gross, George. It says La Rite du Monde. Masks and costumes. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint-Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Ah, but that explains the jacket. That means it's not actually the person's jacket. Oops. Maybe I should have looked at that a little earlier. I found this tissue down the sewer. <laughs> That's disgusting, George. No, no, no. I think the stuff on it is grease paint. Like actors use, or clowns? It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. Puts it back in his pocket. I found a piece of material near the cafe. In the sewer. But shh. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George. It's an enlargement I made. I know. Look what that guy's wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his right cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. I was going oh, with Crescent Moon. Crescent Moon. Aha! 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 I know whose wavelength I'm on. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. Of course, of course. I have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. Right. How do I... where do I get... You're saying at me. What are you saying? Seems some important guys are being assassinated by clowns and penguins. A terrible conspiracy. While the police are keeping quiet about the murders. Not quite the vacation I expected. Nope. Uh, inside the clown's nose, I, definitely George, definitely, 
found the name of the costume shop from which the clan suit was hired. What a great lead. Uh, she gave me a photograph. It shows a man emerging from the courtyard wearing trousers made of the same material. And there's a scar. A scar? A scar? There's a scar on his cheek. In the shape of a crescent moon. Yeah, see, crescent moon. La Rissée du Monde. Is that where I'm going again? I can't remember. I think so. It was an antique phonograph, the kind you have to wind by hand. There is a flamingo on the skeleton scythe. Okay, let's talk to this guy. Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please, come in. Welcome. Leave the mundane world behind. For in these four walls, fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. <gasps> Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible! You'll be telling me next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie. I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of course. How can I help you? Uh... Mm, there's no really point in asking about Plantel. Let's ask about the clown. I'm looking for a man who hired a clown costume from you. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Ever! Possible. There are too many! Ah! Um... Why do I not have the material anymore? Do you recognize this man? Oui, monsieur. I sold him some grease paint. And? And? <laughs> Tell me! Have you heard of a man named Plantow? I do not recall any one of that name. No, of course not. Uh, the face paint. Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. Oh, the sewers! <laughs> Best Imers number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La creme de la creme of Cespian accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two can. What about to humans? I don't know. Do you recognize this man? Ah, oui. He was ill this morning. That is the man to whom I sold the grease paint. Well, yes. I remember the scar on his face. He chose two costumes. Bozo the clown and Seamus the pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. And the nose? Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. Okay, okay. Wow. Well. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Uh, well, okay. It's a shock buzzer. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Kill me? You did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift. Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, he brought geese paint. Yes, he rented a pixie and a clown. He called himself Khan. I'm on his trail! Well, I'm on a trail. I don't want to go to the police. Okay, let's now try... Yes, back in Nico's apartment. We'll go back and talk to her. Hi. Oh, hello. I'm guessing I meant to have done that first and look, actually looked at the nose. So this is a bit more stuff. Uh, the buzzer? No, I don't want to shock her. I just want to. The uh, guy at the novelty shop gave me this. What is it? A hand buzzer. You put it in your hand and give people electric shocks. Why? It's a gag. A practical joke. <laughs> If you ever use it on me, I'll break your arm. Okay, okay. <laughs> I get the picture. Uh, I okay. have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. I thought that would be... I have a bit more information. We've got to hunt this con fellow down. Clearly not. Uh, ooh! Ah! 
in here. Right, yes, and we ask him about the picture. Hello. Hi there, remember me? Ah, and may we, Inspector? Have you found him? Who? The man in the sewer, of course. I'm uh, sifting through the evidence. Ah, uh, rather you than me, monsieur. So, uh, uh, when you are not uh, exploring sewers, uh, what do you? I want to show you the picture. I take a lot of showers. Oh, 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 oh very good, monsieur. <laughs> a policeman with a sense of humor. No, but I wanna... Can I... Hi there, remember me? Ah, may we, Inspector? Have you found him? Who? The man... I'm... Yeah, 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 so yeah. yeah. Take... Oh. Okay. I was thinking I might be able to show him the picture. Clearly not. So we'll use the phone and we'll call... The... I assume the tailor? We'll, we'll um, try and get some information out of him. Although he may just be pointing us back to the costume shop anyway. Hello? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No. No. That's not possible. Oh, okay. Uh, forget it. Listen. All I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. Um... Clown. No. The man I'm looking for is called... Khan. He bought a suit from you, remember? Mr. Khan. Yes, I remember him. Yes, I delivered the suit to his hotel. The Hotel Ubu. Uh, I uh, don't remember the room number. It was upstairs. The second room on the right-hand side of the corridor. Thanks, Todrick. That's all I wanted to know. Now I've got you, Mr. Clown. It's Mr. The Clown. Let's, let's, let's get it right. Interesting. These are the two faces used for the terrorists. The man looked like an amiable Bigfoot. The guy looked just like a weasel. Or right, I could go around the back. Oh, I assume this is where we come out. This is going to be like where we come out type thing. We're going to run away, get caught in a bit of a bo bit of bother. Let's talk to them. But I assume we're going to get caught in a bit of bother up there and then have to dodge out and come out this way, I guess. 